uh, and, and I think we'll all be happier, we'll live happier lives. So maybe, maybe that is something that is that can come out of this. And, and I think if there's anyone that can do that, it's it's you, the, the fans of, of The Chosen and people like-minded, you know, mm -hmm. can come and really really come to a, a moment of peace mm -hmm. and happiness, you know? Um, so, yeah. you know, thank, thank you, you. And, and, and I look forward to your, you know, taking this on and, and because now this is a moment for all of us, not just in America. It's, this is a global thing where we've got to reevaluate. Do we? You know, and I would like to advocate for one, no more shaking hands, but I love the namaste. So if we can do <laughs> namaste, and, or as you know, Facebook has it, hands in prayer, I'm good with yeah. either one. Uh, let's adopt yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I, think, I think that'll become more popular, just the bow, as in Asian cultures, just the, the bow of yeah. respect, yeah. it's yeah. hard to take yeah. over. So. Uh, well, thank you so much, Eric, for joining us tonight. I know the fans love you so much. I love you. Uh, we'll see if uh, Nicodemus can make some more appearances in future seasons. But in the meantime, stay safe and healthy. Uh, God bless you, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. And some people have said to me, well, through this show, you it's important that when you are with people of other faiths or people who have it wrong, that you evangelize. And there's concern from some people, evangelicals in particular, because I'm surrounded on this project by so many people of all different faiths. For some reason, they seem to care more about the LDS people I'm with than anyone else. I'm not quite sure why that is. But LDS, Catholic, agnostic, atheist, um, all stripes of the spiritual or lack thereof rainbow. And there seems to be this perception that I'm supposed to take advantage of every opportunity I have to not only share my faith and not only portray the Jesus of the Gospels, but to counteract, argue with, point out the wrong, correct, etc., of any other faith that might have it wrong. And I just don't believe, A, that that's my role. Um, I believe my role primarily is to accurately portray the authentic Jesus to a billion people around the world. And I'm in my own church, surrounded by, occasionally, I shouldn't say surrounded by, but I know people who also have things in their faith or in their relationship with God that could use some education, could use some buttoning up, could use some um, improving, uh, some clarity, some maturity. And I consider that to be true of myself. So to me, I, look, I loved the interview. I love Melissa. I think it's great. I think she had the opportunity to share what she passionately believes about the LDS faith. So I don't think anyone can come away from that video confused about where she stands on it. Um, I don't think people know exactly where I stand on all of it. And I think that's okay, because again, on a public forum, I don't believe it's my job, nor do I believe it's really right for me to speak authoritatively or intelligently about the nuances of the LDS faith. I'm not LDS. I oftentimes say God grades in a curve because of all of the decisions he's made in scripture, one of the most profound decisions I think he's made has been his choice to be addressed as father. He hasn't been, he hasn't chosen to be addressed as the honorable, the great one, the, the, the you know, of all the titles he's chosen, he has elected to be chosen father. And, and, and father, I think, is a title that shows both his justice and mercy simultaneously. So mm. oftentimes I tell people, you know what? As a father, I feel like I do a pretty decent job of being both just and merciful with my children. And I I, I grade my children on a curve. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like 90% is pretty good, son of mine. Yeah, and in fact, good enough that I think the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ can cover the rest. So we're good.
don't sweat it so much you know what i'm saying and with the chosen you're not at 90 percent, bro you're like at 99 so i'm just like i don't even dare post on social media and add to the criticisms because these people i don't think they ever played sports and understand batting averages or ever (laughs) made a film and and just like you say like let's not hang out you know what i'm saying right right. so um, yeah that's all that's all that's all very well said thank you for that yeah 90% 90% is pretty good, son of mine. Yeah, and in fact, good enough that I think the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ can cover the rest. So we're good. Don't sweat it so much. You know what I'm saying? And with yeah. the chosen, you're not at 90%, bro. You're like at 99. So I'm just like, I don't even dare post on social media and add to the criticisms because these people, I don't think they ever played sports and understand batting averages or ever <laughs> made a film. And, and just like you say, like, let's not hang out. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. So, um, yeah, anyway. that's all. That's all. That's all very well said. Thank you for that. There seems to be this perception that I'm supposed to take advantage of every opportunity I have to not only share my faith and not only portray the Jesus of the Gospels, but to counteract, argue with, point out the wrong, correct, etc., of any other faith that might have it wrong. And I just don't believe, A, that that's my role. (laughs) 